Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. This is Night Cam reporter Tim Pamplin. We just arrived on the scene here in Dearborn. This is Michigan Avenue at Oakwood. And what you're looking at is the end of a pursuit, a police pursuit through Dearborn, Dearborn Heights. Now, it all started in Dearborn Heights. Dearborn Heights police in pursuit of that silver vehicle when it came up to this intersection here. Oakwood and Michigan Avenue wrecked into several vehicles. Now, three young men inside that silver car got out and ran. They headed uh, northbound here on Oakwood, where several of them got tased, taken into custody, waiting for an update on conditions. But for now, Michigan Avenue shut down both directions at Oakwood following this high-speed pursuit and crash. Back to you guys downtown. Well, the evidence there that it was a violent collision uh, seems everywhere on the street. All right, we'll, we'll get back to Tim uh, as events warrant. Also coming up tonight, a lifelong Detroiter reaching out to help me Hank after contractors damaged her home during a demolition next door. For months, Sandra Campbell had been dealing uh, with the damage and with the mess. Yeah, this is a mess indeed. The house she's called home for her entire life in need of serious repair now. So she called Help Me Hank to come to the rescue. Hank is live. Hank, I understand in true Hank fashion, you got the city to come out there today. Well, uh, you know, here's what's great. The city responded very quickly to this, Kimberly, and we're happy for it. Take a look here. You can see the original demolition sign here. This is where the house was torn down. That's the good news. But take a look at the damage done to the house next door when this house came tumbling down. The lifelong Detroiter, as you mentioned, that lives in this house, who's lived here most of her life, well, she's devastated to see her house in this condition. I was sitting down talking to my friend on the phone there. Damn, and the whole house just shook. Sandra Campbell could not believe it. It was January and city crews were hard at work tearing down a vacant home next door to her. But that vacant home landed on her house, causing this damage. And then when I came out here, I said, I just broke down and started crying. To see my parents' house mess up like this. She's been working to get it fixed for months and says she's been ignored by the contractor. She can't get an answer from the city. The only home she's ever known now severely damaged. And I'm so scared the animals will start coming in through those holes. So Help Me Hank started making calls. We got in touch with the city of Detroit. And just a short time later, Rudy Harper with the city was here talking with Sandra. And on behalf of the city, we're incredibly sorry that you're going through this right now. But we'll make sure that the issue is resolved. We're told after the long wait, the check is now coming. This nightmare for Sandra finally coming to an end. From what I'm being told is the check will be cut to you. Um, you should have it by next week. Back out here live, you can see not only the structural damage to the roof and the concern, obviously, about animals getting in there. I get it. But take a look down here. Also, her fence was severely damaged. Uh, this is somebody that loves Detroit, loves her home, wants it made right. We appreciate the city helping us come to the rescue. And really, if this goes on to the a contractor that was out here originally. Sandra said that she'd been working to deal with them during the last few months. When she couldn't get answers, we turned to the city for help, and we're thankful they were able to come out here today. We're live here tonight on the west side. Hank Winchester, Kimberly Devin, back to you. Yeah, okay, Hank, thank you. Mission is reeling from yet another mass shooting, this time at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky. Four people were killed, nine others injured when a man opened fire inside the old National Bank this morning. The gunman, a bank employee, was killed in an exchange of gunfire with police. People killed range in age from 40 to 64. Nine victims were treated at the hospital, three of whom are in critical condition. Three have non-life-threatening injuries, and three were treated and released. Among those, a recent graduate of the police academy who was shot during the gunfire this afternoon. Authorities confirmed that some of the attack was shown live on social media by the shooter. I will state this, that the suspect was live streaming, and unfortunately, that's, that's tragic to know that that incident was out there and captured. Um, and so we're hopeful that we can have that that incident removed, that footage removed. And there is much more on this uh, tragic latest mass shooting coming up on NBC Nightly News at 630. Detroit attorney Ben Johnson trotted out new evidence today in a civil lawsuit involving the shooting death of Patrick Leoya by a Grand Rapids police officer. He's brought in police training experts in an attempt to bolster his case against the city of Grand Rapids, its police department, as well as former officer Christopher Schur. Local 4's Rod Maloney is live tonight with this story. Rod. 
Yeah, you know, Johnson and Crump are saying, look, we have a case and we want to move it forward, but they have a problem in that the city of Grand Rapids is saying we have governmental immunity, you can't sue us. So they've gone to a federal judge in Kalamazoo looking to see what's to become of this. And Ben Johnson says he has the evidence that he thinks can change the judge's mind. The shooting death of Patrick Leoya last year came after a traffic stop. Johnson and Crump spent an hour and a half painstakingly going through the available video, showing though Leoya resisted arrest and his autopsy showed his blood alcohol level tested at three times the legal limit, the stop should never have happened at all. This is simply a case of driving while black. We don't ever need to let that issue get swept under the rug because our experts are going to tell you there were so many reasons why this was unjustified. Johnson and Crump hired two well-known police training experts whom both, they claim, found Officer Christopher Schur did not follow any of his training and decimated Leoya's civil rights by shooting him in the back of the head. Before that, the video shows Schur fired his taser twice at close range instead of backing up seven feet from the suspect. Absolutely. Had he followed his training, more likely than not, if A. Patrick probably would have complied to me. If not, he would have then been tased, he would have fallen down, and the whole encounter over. Patrick Leoya's father, Peter, expressed his family's sadness. Patrick has been killed. And when I think about the officer, the murderer, that will murder my son, and is at home with his wife and children, and Patrick is buried, that hurt. Now, you'll remember that Van Johnson had a case in the Oxford school shooting. And Oxford had claimed that there was governmental immunity. And the state judge in that case, or actually the Oakland County judge, ruled that they did have governmental immunity. But Johnson believes that when he goes to federal court uh, in the near future, that he thinks he can convince the judge to change that ruling and go in his favor. Back to you. Rod, do we know when the case will be heard, if at all? Well, that's the thing. Uh, Johnson said, look, win or lose, this thing is going to end up getting uh, getting appealed. OK, so if, if he loses, he'll appeal. If the state, if the uh, folks in Grand Rapids lose, they're going to appeal. And that's probably going to take another year. So it's going to be a long time before mm -hmm. we know whether this thing actually moves forward or not. Yeah. OK, Rod, thanks. Health officials are investigating a fungal infection outbreak in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Workers have been getting sick at the Billarude paper mill in Escanaba. The illness in question is blastomycosis, which is caused by a fungus known to live in wooded areas, especially in the eastern U.S. and parts of Canada. So far, 19 confirmed cases and 74 probable cases, all linked to the paper mill. Symptoms are similar to a cold or the flu. The illness has a mortality rate of about one in every 100 patients. Uh, while the cause has yet to be determined, blastomycosis does not spread from person to person. So it's believed that people are becoming infected by breathing in these tiny fungal spores from their work materials. Michigan has averaged about 26 cases per year over the past decade, making this an unusually large outbreak. Scary. Uh, look out your window. Hard to believe just a few weeks ago we were dealing with an ice storm and all those mass power outages, right? You're right, because the weather is gorgeous, yeah. and that means not only a boost for people's moods, but also a boost for businesses. Will Jones is live with a look at how people are taking advantage of a warmer start to the week. Will? Hey, Kimberly and Devin, I have to tell you, I love working outside when the weather is like this. We went by an ice cream shop this afternoon and it was really busy, so busy, we had to interview the shop owner while he was serving customers. At this Ypsilanti ice cream shop. There you go. You're welcome. The forecast can sometimes be the cherry on top for business. Every week I schedule, I look at the next week's forecast. Jim Tafin has owned ice cream time for more than 30 years. I get excited every year. I love ice cream. I've been eating it. <laughs> I love it as much as the customers. Well, I do home care and my lady wanted to get out today and go get some ice cream. So I brought her here. With the sunny and warmer weather, Alice Van Tassel is making sure her flower beds reflect the change in season. 
That's why she made a trip to Alamond's Landscape Center on Detroit's east side. I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. No, it's, I like the sun and the warm. This family owned garden shop is ready for business to bloom for the season. So get your stuff while you can. If you see it and like it, get it because it always sells fast. This Gross Point Park bike shop is shifting into high gear with the heat. This last weekend with it being sunny and starting to get warmer this week coming up, it's been like just exponential that people are remembering that the bike needs to be tuned up and ready for summer. Rick Terrains co-owns bikes, blades and boards. It's been open for 30 years. I had a dad in the other day who was with his like five year old son. He's like, I got uh, my bike here when I was five year old. Back over at this ice cream shop, Virginia Kingsbury is making some sweet memories with her niece. She's looking forward to more time outdoors with family. I am loving it. I can't wait to get out and exercise. I'm planning on starting my garden, going to spend more time with my grandkids outside. I'm ready. And Tafin is ready for the crowds this week and beyond. I've got extra girls in this week. We're going to, they all know that we're going to stay a little bit later than normal. Tafin wants every customer to not only leave with a sweet treat, but also a smile. I have to say the customer service was top notch. My only regret today is that I didn't get any ice cream. I was worried that I'm kind of a sloppy eater that I was going to spill it on my, my clothes. So maybe I'll, I'll do it after we uh, tear down from this live shot. Live in Ypsilanti, Will Jones, Local We four. wouldn't have cared. We uh, wanted that brownie, whatever that was with the brownie. Uh, another brownie sundae? Ooh. An ice cream splotch <laughs> on your jacket would have fit the day perfectly. Yeah, don't. Don't pass that up for us again. <laughs> Thanks, <Will. laughs> I won't. <laughs> Perfect ice cream weather, apparently, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, shaping up to be uh, just so nice, even for the rest of the work yep. week, too. So let's check in with Kim Adams. So I have to ask, favorite ice cream? Devin? Uh, pistachio. I like strawberry. Mm. Strawberry. But really, any ice cream. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> any ice cream. Apparently, Will doesn't have a favorite, right? <laughs> We've got mint chocolate chip over here. Dr. McGeorge? Vanilla. V oh. Vanilla. Oh. That's all right, Doc. All right. Shocking. All right. <laughs> We're going to work on Dr. McGeorge. Vanilla. All right. Well, proof that the Easter Bunny exists. And he also knows how to water ski. This comes to us from Noel Moore in Waterford. Our My Pick doesn't have to be a pick. It can also be a video as well. How cool is that out in Waterford? Thank you, Noel, for sending that in. Temperatures right now in the upper 60s in many areas, including City Airport, Metro, both at 67, 65 in Pontiac. 10 degrees warmer than it was at the same time yesterday at Metro. 8 degrees warmer City Airport. And oh, we're not done there. We have a nice Nice week ahead. I'll have your complete forecast coming up in just vanilla. Vanilla. He likes what he likes. French vanilla, at least. That no. was vanilla underneath that, that brownie, brownie and chocolate sauce. So I, he's, he's not wrong. <laughs>